Hi, nice to be here. Uh, just confirming, I don't, I'm, I don't feel old enough to be a veteran, veteran really, but um, so, so what I'm going to talk about today, um, can we just have the next slide? So what I'm going to talk about today is there's, I guess, three odd things that I've noticed about bold new ideas. So one is that it's almost impossible to tell how good an idea is when it first comes out. So I'll give, give an example of that that relates to this little project that we've got about the Yike Bike. Um, the other one is there's, a, there's part of the kind of economic growth story around how technology gets deployed. There's a group of people that are a little underappreciated. So I just want to kind of make a little observation about those as well. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is why I don't think there's any such thing as a good idea, which may sound a bit odd, but when I show you, I'll show you some video that we haven't shown publicly before about the development of the Yike bike, and I'll explain why I don't really like talking about ideas so much anymore. So first what I'll do is I'll talk about what our little project is to give some reference to those things. So this is a little project that comes out of Little Christchurch, New Zealand, and it's so bold as to be literally crazy, because our, our goal was to design something that be could become the most common transport device in the world. Now, the reason that's crazy is basically for the last 120 years, a bicycle has been the most commonly owned device in the world for transport. So we thought if you could take a bike and make it fundamentally smaller and so that you could take it, never leave it outside, you could take it on public transport, uh, you could take it in an apartment. It's already been talked about today that now is the first time that more people live in cities than rurally and that pace is just accelerating. Everyone's worked out that you can't just throw more cars into cities. So we're like, well, if you had something that you could go as fast as cars in a congested city, because a lot of large cities, you know, the average speed is already down about 15 k's an hour. So if you can buzz past the traffic, you never have to leave it outside. You can take it with you. The other thing that we've really done with this is made it so that you can jump on it and go over bumps. It's actually really manoeuvrable. Once you get the hang of it, it really is just like riding, learning to ride a bike. It takes a little bit to learn, and then you get the hang of it. And I use it um, almost every day to get to work. The great thing about it is it takes about eight cents worth of electricity to fill it up. Um, you don't have to install charge stations all over the place. It can basically access over a billion charge ports already installed in the world. Just because it's so small, you can just take it anywhere. Um, so the whole idea of this was that you need a decent sized front wheel so that you can go over potholes and bumps. And then the, the aim was to really make everything else as small and light as possible. So we think long term you'll be able to make these as, as cheap as bicycles because uh, there's a lot of interesting technology you can deploy. And then it really is a great way for just buzzing around cities. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a relatively easy way. It's a really safe way to you know, basically buzz around a city. So, so one of the uh, things I guess that we observed about this is, you know, new things are always really weird for people. So, you know, to call this the Yike Bike undignified, complicated, inefficient, expensive, distasteful, they're all the sort of things that you might say, well, that's, you know, yeah, it's, kind of, it's just a bit too weird. Why would you sit on a bike like this when we do this all the time? You know, there's nothing inherently natural about this. It's just that we're used to it. So you just sit upright and you sit on it. And when you sit on it and have a go, you go, wow, that's actually kind of cool. But those comments, were all about the bicycle when it first came out 125 years ago. And the, th and the thing that's interesting about that is you'd be hard picked to better find a, you know, a more compelling design than the bicycle. The reason all bikes look like that is that it is a compelling design that really works. There's something about it that is just magic. Now, that was a design that truly is fantastic and that's what they were saying. Just because the gut reaction is, yeah, there's something about it looks wrong. Um, I also quite like this picture because there's kind of a nice transition there from, you know, from two wheels, a big small, and then big small again. So I'm not saying that ours is necessarily a great design like that one, but, you know, who knows. Um, <clears throat> so this may seem a little off topic, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about economic growth theory, of all things. So um, basic economic growth theory requires increase in productivity. So Basically, if we want to consume more, we have to produce more. And so that requires productivity, new things, whether it's creating new environmental technologies or whatever it happens to be. At a micro level, at a firm level, that really depends on people creating new innovative products. And the, the way that that happens is you have to have a group of people called early adopters that look at something as bizarre as, you know, what we're talking about, and they go, well, actually, that's worth a try. And the only way that 
uh, the companies can get cracking is if there are enough early adopters to give that a go, that then allows the company to get going, raise the capital, increase it so that it can become low cost, so that everyone can have it. So the first people that bought the big bricks of cell phones, you know, and we all look at people who buy the early adopters if we're not early adopters and we go, ah, oh, you know, what are they doing buying that? But if they didn't do that, you would never get the benefit of those technologies. So as early adopters, I just want to pat you on the back and say, you guys are actually unappreciated economic superheroes. <laughs> because um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of, you know, the people that create it, we get lots of credit, the people that finance it, but people don't, re and they talk about how you move from early adopters to mainstream, but no one really says, well, actually, early adopters are really important. <clears throat> uh, so not only can you pat yourself on the back, but you get to own all the cool stuff first. <laughs> so... The next thing I'm going to talk about is, um, I guess, why I don't talk about good ideas anymore, because I always wanted to be an inventor from very early on. So I spent a lot of time thinking, well, what you need to be is creative. So I tried lots of different things, and for me, lying on the couch works. And a lot of people think that's lazy, but it's just a case of everyone's so busy, they don't actually give their, themselves time to relax and think. And then, um, so that works for me, so I talk about that. And then a lot of people say, well, how do you come up with an idea like this? And you don't really come up with an idea. You have a hunch, and then there's a process. So what I'll do here is just show you a bit of the development of the evolution of the Yike bike. And it really is, it looks amateurish and backyard stuff, but basically rapid prototyping and trying lots of things is really the only way that you can come up with something like this. So you'll see with these early prototypes, they're all pedal, and I'll talk about that. But these were basically, we were trying to find out, is there a configuration that's different from a bike that's inherently smaller and that is stable so that you, we, needed, we knew you had to have a decent sized front wheel to start. And then we just wanted to make everything else as small as possible. We didn't know how you would steer, whether it would be possible. So we tried all sorts of things. This is a servo mechanism to, we didn't know if the steering was going to be up and down or a joystick. Um, this is one of our very first ones that starts going. It's not actually as old as that. Um, our marketing guy just like making it look old. This one's got um, <laughs> skateboard wheels on the back, and this guy's <laughs> always called our tree hugger. <laughs> um, and as you can see through this progression, we're slowly getting something that's easier and easier to uh, ride. Uh, and we just basically had this rapid prototype, and we would try something, tweak it, try it, change it, try it, change it. And it really is a very good development process. Here you're starting to see there's a bit of space. We're starting to think about how it might eventually fold up. You're starting to see the handlebars coming around the side rather than being at the back, which is a bit more of a natural position. This is the first electric one. Now, the reason we went electric was it actually ultimately allowed us to make it smaller, lighter, and more efficient. Uh, and then, yes, that's a drill slapped on the side, rapid <laughs> prototyping. Um, but basically, could we use a high-speed geared down motor? Because most electric bikes use very heavy motors. We wanted to use something small and light. That's our first carbon fiber part. I got teased because I thought it was so cool I'd put it next to my bed at night. <laughs> so anyway, this one here, <coughs> this was our first car mine. We thought it was so great. Um, and now we look at it and we just like cringe. But that's just the nature of the process. And this is kind of, you can see it getting uh, more and more refined. Uh, you can see uh, here we've, <coughs> um, here we're getting to a stage where we can pretty much throw anyone on it. They can learn how to drive it relatively quickly. And then we've added a whole lot of safety features around lights and braking. We've got first bike in the world with electronic anti-skid brakes. And now we can throw pretty much anyone on it. They can learn how to do it, get really manoeuvrable, and ended up, that process ended up on the cover of Time magazine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we also got a bunch of other awards, and we're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Those sorts of things, which is kind of cool. Um, and, and again, marketing guy insisted we put that after showing all the backyard stuff. So we're actually, you know, quite a progressive company. So what I'll do is I will just uh, unfold and ride off into the sunset and show you just how quick and easy it is. So you just unfold it like that. Well. 